Hi, um, it's Jess. I'm doing a tutorial for the Tunisian feather from Poppy and Bliss. Um, you can easily Google their pattern. I've posted it on my page a few times. Um, it's beautiful. And I'm obsessed. <laughs> I won't even lie. It's a great pattern. Um, I used worsted weight yarn. This is actually some of the DIY yarn that was available at Walmart um, last year. I want to say last year or early this year. Um, it's just a medium worsted weight pink and a medium gray. I think they're gorgeous. Sorry about my nails and I've been working on my car so my hands aren't, you know, all that great right now. But, um, and I feel like the lighter the color, I mean you can do it on dark colors, but I feel like the lighter the color the more the stitches will show the V shape that we're looking for as far as the feather goes. Um, and I personally, um, I actually got this I think from one of my friends, Jen um, McDaniel, and this is a, you can tell there's not a lot of grooves, which I prefer for small Tunisian work. You know, there's a thumb groove, but it, we're not making a, anything huge, so. Um, a regular crochet hook, I'm using a five millimeter. Um, depending on how lacy or how, you know, fluffy you want your feather, you can make use bigger or smaller hook. I'm just using a five. And it works w really well with the worsted weight in this technique. Um, I love this feather. <laughs> I do. Um, I'm going to go with what the original pattern started with and how I, in how, how I finished mine. Um, the pattern has different finishes, but I'll show you what they mean by the decrease and finishing it off. Um, but it's not exact. My finish is not exactly like the pattern. So, first of all, we start with a slip knot. This is really weird because I have an actual camera set up now. Well, I mean, it's my phone, but um, so I'm not looking directly at my work. <laughs> so we're gonna chain eleven. It doesn't have to be really tight. In fact, you really don't want it tight. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I have a chain eleven. And in Tunisian, it's a lot. <laughs> it really is a lot like knitting. But uh, we're gonna pull up loops along the chain. So pull up one loop. We're going to pull up a loop uh, on every chain, just use the top. Trust me, it works out in the end, it's going to look kind of crazy, <laughs> but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with a little crazy. So, and, and don't use a lot of tension, you can see my, my, my hook is moving very smoothly through all these loops. And you really, I know you may crochet really tight, this is not the time to crochet very tight at all. Um, because it'll curl on you. Um, if, even if you want to use a bigger hook for the first row, I, that's that's also quite common. Um, I just make sure my tension is loose um, as far as that goes. Now, I don't know where I found this at, but I, I did um, see a tutorial where you chain one at the end of your return row. That is not correct. That'll, that'll mess you up. <laughs> so... Um, but this is just basic Tunisian. There's nothing really that fancy going on in this feather. So we're going to do the return row. You pull through one. Okay. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. <laughs> pull through two. Yarn over. Two. And you continue through the rest of the row. That's all you gotta do. And congratulations, you just finished your first Tunisian row. All right, now this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna try to work this as close as possible. Now, these are vertical bars. There's a horizontal bar. I'm really lucky I have nails right now because I could really just show you. Now, in the make one in the top bar, I think that's how, how they put it. Do not, do not chain anything. This is just how you ended up, okay? So you're going to make a stitch in that bar right there. If you're a knitter, it's very similar to making one in the horizontal bar, okay? Then you're going to 
TSS3, which is Tunisian Simple Stitch, 3. So 1, 2, 3. And then two, TSS3 together, which is Tunisian, well, Tunisian Simple Stitch 3 together. So we're going to go under, just like a regular decrease in crochet, 2, 3. Grab up a loop, pull through three. Okay. You don't have to pull it super snug. Trust me, it'll make your V-shape, whether you think so or not. Okay. So we're going to TS3, TSS3 again. So Tunisian Simple Stitch again. This is for the larger feather. Um, I've made tinier feathers, and I want to make a knit pattern for this because I think a knit pattern would also look pretty neat. So... All right, so we've done that. Now we got to make another one. I'm going to try to zoom up with this. See your horizontal bars right there. It's a little tricky, but you can do it, I promise. <laughs> All right, so you get the hook in. Look at that. All right, um, and then here's your last stitch, your end stitch. That's what she refers to as your end stitch. You never can really... As far as it goes, you don't ever really count the first or last stitch as a stitch per se. It's a loop. So once again, you just go on your return row, yarn over, pull through. You always just pull through one. Sometimes you have to loosen it up a little bit. It goes a little smoother. Yarn over, pull through one. And then yarn over, pull through two, and finish your row. You can kind of see that it's it's kind of curling up, and that's okay because when I finish mine, it um this is a short. It's gonna be a very short <laughs> feather because I'm just showing you guys the techniques. Okay, I'm gonna do one more row for you uh, in this color, and I'm gonna show you how to change colors in Tunisian. Okay, um so. All right, now we're gonna go back to that horizontal bar, make one, and yes, it's the same hole that your working yarn is coming out of, per se. And yes, it can be a little tricky, but that's really the trickiest part of this entire situation. So we're gonna TSS three again, so one, two, three and then go under three and I yarn over pull through three you can kind of see the V shape starting um, oh no my yarn's gonna fall <laughs> okay so we're gonna do three more Tunisian simple stitches one Oh, this is messing with I've never filmed like this, honestly, so um, it's kind of messing with my head a little. But I thought you guys might like this, so it's a very popular item right now. So, you know, you find your horizontal bar again. Okay. And don't forget your end stitch. Oh, that wasn't the horizontal bar. Okay. There's the horizontal bar. I had to look over my camera for a second. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, the return row is super important when you're about to change colors, okay? So what we're going to do, you know, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And so you get to the very last two loops, okay? Um, so, you know, return as usual. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it in frame. I've never, like I said, I've never filmed like this before. So we're going to keep it right here. I'm going to go get my gray. 
I really love this heather gray color. Oop, and there's the ball drop. All right. <laughs> You're going to have it behind your work. I like to hold or wrap it even the uh, yarn tail. However you like to, you know, have tension. You're going to take your gray and pull it through for the last stitch. It's almost an invisible color change. It's why I like the Tunisian color change. So you're going to go into your horizontal bar, just like all the other rows we've done, and go through. And after I feel like after a few stitches, it's pretty locked in place, so you can kind of drop it. As you can see, I dropped it. There's a the tail. So, see, here's our made stitch. So we're going to do three, two more. Two more. I'm sorry. Uh, oops, don't do that. Do not do that. It's kind of hard to see. Okay. I'm going to go back through. <laughs> That's okay. Um, we're humans. And this is an awkward situation for me. <laughs> so here's the first loop. Made stitch. One, two, three. Now we're going to go under three vertical bars. Um, just like before, then another TSS three, so that means three Tunisian simple stitches, similar to like a knit three. I really want to make this into a knitting pattern. <laughs> I think that would be fun and interesting. And I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think the back of a Tunisian simple stitch looks a lot like knitting, like a garter stitch. Uh, what about you? What do you think? So, go into my horizontal bar again at the very end. And then my end stitch. I use my nails a lot. I've learned to use my nails a lot when it comes to crochet. Because you can just, sometimes it, it gets a little stubborn. Okay, so just like the color changed before, we're going to go through our regular row, you know, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and you can do as many color changes as you'd like, as long as, you know, you're comfortable with all those ends you're weaving in, which I'll show you how to do that too, which I, it's a neat little trick. I'm a little lazy when it comes to that. I don't know about you guys. I hate weaving in ends, but I've never had a problem with this, so... Now you see it's a little loose, so I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit. Now if it's only one row, one or two rows that you're changing colors, you don't need to snip them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and snip the gray, the gray one because this is going to be a really short little fat stubby feather. So I'm just going to snip my end, the gray one. Okay. And then I'm just going to pick that pink right back up. Just like that. Okay. We're going to do one row of this pink, and then I'm going to show you how to decrease with this. And it's the simplest thing in this pattern, I swear. So we're going to go to the horizontal bar, TSS3 again. One, two, three, yay, and then under three. I, I like number patterns, so the 11 stitch feather. It's fantastic. So back to one um, Tunisian simple stitch. I don't really like to decrease right after, like the, the, the row directly after a color change. I feel like it, it's a little sloppy. So that's just me. You are absolutely welcome to do it however you please. So horizontal bar, you make one end stitch. And you see it's kind of getting a little tight. You just kind of move it back and forth and get it back to being kind of, I, I call workable. <laughs> I wouldn't say loose, but I say workable. Okay. So, no, don't, you, I don't need you to fall too. Okay. So, we're going to yarn over, pull through. I know this is a long video, I'm sorry. But it, it goes quicker once you get the hang of it, I promise. Um... 
So go ahead and make your return rows normal. Okay. It's going to be a very short feather, <laughs> just for demonstration purposes. And you basically, you would continue with this row of the make one TSS3 until you get the length of feather, or just about the length that you want. Okay. Change colors as many times as you please. Um, here's one I made. This was fun. This is my first feather. Um, I, lo I love it. It's huge, as you can tell. It's huge. Um, <laughs> kind of went a little crazy with it, but uh, that's okay. It's And, you know, I love this feather. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's a long behind feather. So, as far as the decrease goes, all right, it's going to be a little fat feather, okay? Instead of making one, you're going to go directly into the, into the bar and skip the make one. That's all you do. You do everything else the same, so you're going to do TSS3. And I like a gradual decrease, personally. So, I'm going to go under 3. Okay, cool. And, go, and finish out the rest of the row. And after this row, I'm going to do a regular row with the make one and everything and then decrease again and with a, it depends on what size you start with because i've done five stitch feathers for some earrings i made the other day or yesterday um so you only really needed to de decrease once to get the feather shape you were looking for um but i've also done seven stitch feathers i've done nine stitch um, basically, it just has to be an odd stitch, and you can figure out basically the three middle stitches. Make sure it's even on both sides. So now we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitches left. And that is a simple decrease without the make one on both sides. Okay? So we're going to yarn over. There's nothing special about the return row. Um, in fact, that's a pretty normal, uh, Tunisian row, honestly. So, except the decrease, but that's not a big deal. So, we're just going to go through. And it decreases two stitches, so just keep that in mind. Um, now, this is personal preference. You can... Basically, you would go through, you would Tunisian a regular row with the make one on both sides, and you decrease again, so then it would be, and I'll show you. So now that you've decreased once, you go back into your horizontal bar. Um, if it cooperates with you, that'd be great. <laughs> it can get a little sticky. Uh, do, 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 do. Nails come in handy for this, I swear. Okay, so now that you have less stitches, it would be a TSS2. So you'd only do two of these. Two stitches. But you'd still go under three. Because it's still the middle. Okay. And your feather is going to lean. And, and usually in the left-hand direction, unless you're a left-handed crocheter, then, you know, it'll, cro you know, decrease on the right. But, um, it'll lean in that, and, and that, she notes that in her pattern that it gives it a more natural tone, and I think, I, I, I agree, you know. Um, so, and this is just a regular, I like, I prefer a regular patterned row between my decreases. If you'd rather a more, you know, severe decrease, you're welcome to do that. So, back to a regular return row. I've never seen a pattern without a, with a different return row, but, you know, I'm sure there's something out there. Um, <laughs> it's funny, because I'm not that experienced in Tunisian, but this is one of the simplest and the most, yet most interesting Tunisian patterns I've ever seen, and I love it. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to decrease again. 
Oh god, it's 20 minutes already. Alright. I'm not a very quick crocheter. I'm really not. So, I skipped the make one. Tunisian two. Decrease that in the middle. Tunisian two, well, two, and then the end, end stitch. Return row. It's one of the simplest techniques I've ever seen. Okay, and you see it's it's coming to a you know it's it's getting a little bit slimmer. All right, so we're gonna I will finish this feather. All right, so make one. Now we're only gonna do one Tunisian simple stitch. Okay, there's three loops. Then you're gonna go under three, not four, three, <laughs> three. Tunisian simple stitch. Make one, and then your end stitch. My thumb's locking up. Sorry, guys. So, return row. And we're doing one more decrease row. Now, here's a trick that I don't that they're not gonna teach you in stores. Okay. So I'm gonna show you some. This is what I've been doing with my feathers. And as you know, anyone who knows, I've been doing feathers like all day yesterday and today. So anyway. Um decrease row. We skip the make one on each side. Okay. Now, you may continue to do a regular row, a regular return row. But what I'm going to do, there's, there's five stitches left, okay? I'll, I'd rather a larger end of my feather, so I'm going to yarn over, make sure this is loose, because it's about to come through five stitches, okay? It's actually, I, I like a, a little bit larger end on my feathers, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, chain, that's the word. I'm going to chain one. <laughs> and you can see the little gaps. I'm going to single crochet around the entire thing. Now, what about the feather's end? Well, I'm going to show you that too. Okay. Now, if you want to continually, gradually get down to three stitches, and that's when you, you know, you that's when you'll pull through all three loops and you don't have to single crochet through all, through all of it but I'm doing it because I think it's easier to put the little stem on and it's easier to weave in my ends okay so single crocheting down my feather it's a little short stubby feather like I said you can you can do as many as you'd like honestly um, until so you're satisfied with your feather, I would prefer, I, I would suggest and recommend lighter colors for the main feather at least. Um, it seems, I think you can see the stitches better. Now when I come to this corner, I'm going to chain one and go in the same stitch but make sure I'm on the off, in the opposite direction. Okay, so it, it gives me a nice corner. And then... Yeah, single crochet over that end. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm putting this over here, and the yarn dropped again. So I'm putting the yarn over, and I'm crocheting right over that end. That is my favorite way to weave an end, guys. Um, so that's my little cheat right there, and we're gonna do that with the gray too. Okay, so. Depending on how long you want your feather stem to be, um, it's up to you. If you want a little short stem, only only chain a few. 
But this is what I do. I is you know this is a short feather, so I'm only gonna uh, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna break a rule real quick. HDC in the second chain. It's gonna be a little hard, but finagle it. Just trust me. So it's gonna be a half double crochet. Okay. No, in the second chain from the hook, not the third. So it's going to be a little tight, but that is kind of the point. Okay. Then I'm going to single crochet the rest of the other stitches. I know it's a long video, but I wanted to make sure everything was clear and concise. And maybe you guys wouldn't have that many questions if, if, if it was clear enough. And I, I want this to be able to be done with beginners, people who are, you know, crocheters who are advanced, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to single crochet the rest of the way down, like I said. And then I'm going to single, or I'm going to slip stitch into that same stitch I single crocheted on the feather. So you have this little thick, thicker, little bit thicker end right there. And then I'm going to continue single crocheting around the feather. I've never had any issues with ends coming out by crocheting over them. Not once. So I'm coming to the corner. I'm going to single, or I'm going to chain one and go to the next one. Um, you may want to loosen up your tension unless you want it to curl because these are like really, really, really long single crochets, as you can tell. So I would just kind of loosely single crochet. Now, when you get to the gray, we're going to crochet right over these ends. And, I, and this is a small project, so I would suggest two or three stitches with, with the gray over. Okay, just two or three stitches, and you should be fine. Pull it kind of snug, and you're good. Um, and then finish it out. You only have a few more stitches to go, so. And I'm going to slip. Oh, got out of frame there. I'm sorry. I'm not refilming this. <laughs> so. We got to this point. Short tails are now. So what I do is I go from the underside of the feather. Okay, and I go in and out, in and out. All right, have that. Okay, now that's done. Now we have these four ends. You're gonna panic on me in a second. Okay. Ready? These are not very sharp, but you get the point. Just snip, snip, snip. And there you go. There's your feather. You can tell it's the same feather um, as the tutorials. Um, I only did one color change, but you can do as many as you want. Um, you can do more a uh, longer feather. You can do a shorter feather. Um, if you want to vary the amount of loops, just make sure it's even on both sides. And you can make smaller, tinier feathers. You can make big feathers. Possibilities are truly endless um, with these feathers, and I think that's really cool. So um, you can stretch it out a little, curl it if you want, you know. And here's the back. Pretty neat back. But here's the feather. Tutorial is complete in under 30 minutes.